We often hear these two terms, control limit and specification limits. And sometimes people use them interchangeably as if they are same terms. But in reality, these two terms, control limit and the specification limit are completely different. So in this video, we're going to look at the difference between these two terms, control limit and the specification limit. So don't skip any section of this video and watch the video till the end. Hello and welcome to yet another video series from Digital E-Learning, your one-stop solution for all your learning needs. Control limits are the limits of variation that is expected from a process when process is in statistical control. So when we say statistical control, it means that the only the common cause of variation exists and no special cause of variation is present. Such process generally show consistency in their performance over the period of time. And any variation that occurs, say for example in this case the dotted line and it crosses the upper control limit and the lower control limit indicates the special cause of variation. And when it stays within these two limit shows the common cause of variation. So control limits are calculated from a process itself. Because control limits show how the process is performing, they are also referred to as the voice of process. There are many two types of control limit, upper control limit and the lower control limit, which are calculated using mean and the standard deviation. Upper control limit is mean plus 3 times the standard deviation and lower control limit is mean minus 3 times the standard deviation. Sometimes when we calculate the limits, the lower control limit might come to a negative value. In such a case, we take it as zero because there is no point going beyond zero. In short, control limits are based on the performance of your process. These values are calculated from data and they tell you about the variability in your process. Specification limits. So specification limits basically are set by customers and hence they are referred to as the voice of customer because they represent the value which, which the customer require. They are the limit on the product characteristics that define where the product work and where it will not work. And if the product falls outside these spec, the item will be rejected. Generally, there are two types of specification limit lower specification limit and the upper specification limit and this specification limit should be placed at a point where the losses due to variation equals the benefit of the product. These limits are often but not always have to be symmetric. So if your part falls within upper specification and lower specification limit, part will be meeting your customer expectation. But if it falls outside this range, it will be rejected. Specification limit are used to determine the process capability and the sigma value. Let us understand all these concepts, control limit and specification with help from some graphs. So we'll first create the specification limit, which is also known as the customer expectation or the voice of customer. Then we'll create this process, which is a normal distribution process. And we set our up lower specification limit and the upper specification limit. Anything beyond this red lines is a defective part. And then we define our upper control limit and the lower control limit, which we call it as a voice of process or process variation. Control limits have no relation to specification limit. Let us understand this with the help of a car parking. So when you are trying to park your car in a garage, there are three possible scenarios. Case 1, when control limit falls within the specification limit. Think in this case, the walls of a garage as your specification limit, which is defined by customer. So if your control limits fall within the specification limit, it does not matter if you park the car in the middle, it will always fit and you have plenty of room on either side. That is one of the reasons the Six Sigma philosophy of focus on removing variation in the process. This is probably the best design a process can have. Let's, let's take another case. 
when the specification limit coincides with your upper control limit. In this case, the car will only have little bits will be smaller than the garage, but you can still better park it right in the middle of the garage or center of the specification if you want to get your car into the garage. This is the least probable case because in this case, you're almost on the edge of specification limit. Third case, so when specification limit falls between the control limit, that means your car is too wide for a garage and nothing you can do to center the process will help you. You have to change the dispersion of a process. That means make the car smaller in this case. So when control limit exceeds the specification limit, just like in this case, that means some part of the process will be functioning outside the specification range. That means whenever the range of control limit is greater than the range of specification, your process will start producing defects. Let us take a few more examples to understand it better. So what conclusion can we draw from this figure? This shows that the process is not meeting the customer specification. Even if the process is in control, it does not mean that it is meeting the voice of customer. It appears to shift towards the lower specification limit that would help to reduce the non-conformance that are occurring above the upper specification limit. Let's take the next case. Here. The voice of customer is spaced between the lower specification and the upper specification limit. The voice of process is the red bell curve line. The figure shows that the process is meeting the customer specification. The voice of process here is within the voice of customer. So comparing to the previous one, the distribution here is more precise, more accurate. Assuming the customer target is the midpoint between the LSL and the USL. So in a situation like this, it may be possible that too much money or resources are being dedicated to maintain this type of process. It all depends upon the risk of non-confirming whether the competition is meeting the VOC altogether with less control but yet good enough at a lower price. Probably we can take another example here. So in this case, you can see the figure shows the process is meeting the customer specification most of the times, but at, at the end, it, it it is still crossing your customer specification limit on both sides, which leads to non-conformance. In other words, the voice of process here extends beyond the boundaries of voice of control. Again, assuming the customer target is the midpoint between the lower specification and the upper specification limit, this is the process that is accurate, but however, it is not precise. In this situation like this, team should be encouraged that the process variation is all that needs improving here. Mean is acceptable as long as it is in the center as improvement and improvement should be made to reduce the variation in this case. Let us do a quick recap of these two terms, control limit and the specification limit. So control limit is nothing but the voice of process and specification limit is nothing but the voice of customer. Control limit tells how the process is doing and specification limit tells what we want the process to do. Control limit cal is calculated from data and specification limit is defined by the customer itself. You don't have any say in this. Display on control chart. So you display control limits on your control chart using LCL and UCL. And specification limit is displayed on the histograms. So control limit, it is applied to subgroups. And specification limit, it is applied to items. Control limit, it guides for the process action and specification limit is basically separate the good part from bad part. Now, I think with this, now you can easily identify the difference between these two terms, control limit and the specification limit. So that is all I have on this video. 
see you soon in my next video now you can follow digital e-learning on all the social media platforms like instagram youtube twitter and for our regular updates you can join our facebook and linkedin groups i will share the link for all these in my description below thanks for watching digital e-learning i hope you like this video don't forget to like and share this video with all your friends on all the social media platforms